What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new series that I am super, super excited about. I would like to introduce you to the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Wow, I am so pumped for this one. You may have already been able to deduce from the thumbnail, but if you weren't able to deduce from the thumbnail, you can certainly tell by what you see on your screen here. But I have relocated all 32 teams in the NFL, relocated and rebranded them. And not only that, but before starting this franchise, I also did a fantasy draft. So not only do we have 32 new teams and 32 new areas, but who even knows where any of these players ended up? What does that mean? That means no more Patrick Mahomes on the Chiefs. That means no more Josh Allen on the Bills. That means no more Christian McCaffrey on the 49ers. I don't even know where everyone's at. I haven't even checked the rosters yet up until this point. So I am so pumped for this one. I hope you guys are too. If you're looking forward to watching this new series, please like the video and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I do drop Madden 24 content each and every week, sometimes twice a week. And I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. Now, before I dive into this one here, I just want to mention, if you watch the St. Louis Sentinels franchise, I'm not stopping that. St. Louis Sentinels franchise is still going on. I am going to be running these two series simultaneously. I thought about doing a throwback series with Madden 08, and I still might. If you guys are interested in seeing that, certainly let me know. But right now, I am going all in, balls to the wall, with Sentinels franchise and now the SFL series. So before I dive in any further, let me just tell you how this thing all came to be. In this Madden universe, the Kansas City Chiefs lost to the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 58. I'm actually recording this before the Super Bowl has even happened, so not even sure who will win that Super Bowl, but in this Madden universe, that is how it played out. Enraged by the outcome, Taylor Swift and the millions of Swifties out there all combined their money and purchased the NFL in an attempt to avenge her BF's defeat. Swift vowed to never let another NFL game be played until the Niners were stripped of their title and a rematch was held. Back-to-back -back Mega Millions winner CJ Smalls caught wind of this, put up all the money to his name, and got all the players back together, including Kelsey, who was furious at his GF's actions. And thus, the SFL was born. So there is the backstory now let's dive right into the meat and potatoes of this franchise i will be playing as you can see on your screen as the toronto thunderbirds which are formerly the buffalo bills here in the afc east that is right canada got themselves a team eh i don't even know if that's a canadian accent but canada does actually have multiple teams now in this franchise so let's meet our team first and then i'll show you kind of some of the other teams around the sfl now i am very proud i did the fantasy draft last night i did that off camera and we're actually the highest rated team in the sfl 88 overall and that was i did a snake draft and that was me picking the players so i'm super pumped about that but let's take a look at your Toronto Thunderbirds got to make sure I don't say St. Louis Sentinels and don't know if you can see on the screen at the top right our coach is none other than Damon Sanders the bald-headed bullet shout out to those who watch the cupcake relocation franchise you will know exactly who Damon Sanders is but here is the team so the man under center first none other than Jordan Love one of my new favorite players as you guys know I am a Packers fan Jordan Love up to an 82 overall in this game. Surprised they didn't give him star dev. Surely next season he will have star dev or maybe even superstar for that matter. But Jordan Love is going to be the man under center. Got Case Keenum also as well in the backfield. Running back room, we got Kyron Williams, who is a very good up and coming player. Also sure that he's going to have at least minimum star dev next season when the next Madden comes out. But he's an 84 rated overall too. And he's going to be our running back number one paired in the backfield along with Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt will be our running back number two. And we also got Melvin Gordon as well. So a pretty decent running back room. Kyle Juszczyk, though, fullback. I was surprised teams were in that. He was around probably, I want to say, in the 20th round still of the draft. And I'm like, I mean, I got to pick up Hughes. I got to pick up Hughes. There's no doubt about it. So best fullback in the game, 10-year vet out of Harvard. 
Kyle Juszczyk will be in the backfield alongside Kareem Hunt and Kyron Williams. Pretty pumped about our receivers too. We got Chris Olave and Zay Jones. So two really young, really good receivers that should be able to develop pretty quickly in this game. We also got Marquise Goodwin pretty much just for speed. And then good old MVS. Hopefully he's not dropping passes in this game like he like he has in real life and then randall cobb so two former packers going to be playing along a current packer jordan love as uh, the receivers and offensive line pretty good we got trent williams best in the business best left tackle in the game 13 year vet superstar dev not sure how long he's going to be around but for right now he is going to be protecting Jordan loves blind side and you don't really want couldn't ask for anybody better than Trent Williams. Then we got Joe Tooney probably not going to play in the Super Bowl coming up here, which is pretty unfortunate for the Chiefs. But we got Joe Tooney and then at center, we got Ryan Kelly. I mean, decent, you know, nothing crazy, but at the same time, pretty good, solid offensive line. I think uh, at least definitely something to build around. Then we got Graham Glasgow. I mean, it's whatever. Nothing really too crazy. And then Donovan Smith is going to be playing the right tackle position. Tight end, we got a good one. I think Darren Waller and then also Logan Thomas. Shout out to the St. Louis Sentinels. He is a team captain staple of that organization. And then Ricky Seals Jones. I just picked him up because he's a former Brown and I like the Browns. So that's our offense. I mean, again, nothing crazy, but we're the highest rated team right now, at least in the SFL. So no like super studs or anything like that but just a bunch of really good players. Now we do got some super studs on the defense. Let's just kick it off with the man in red here, the superstar X Factor, Miles Garrett. How about Miles winning the defensive player of the year? Lots of people not happy about that. I'm of course happy because I'm a Browns fan and I do not like the Pittsburgh Steelers, but a lot of people thinking that TJ Watt should have got it, maybe even Micah Parsons. I can't say that I necessarily disagree with that. I mean, how much stats are stats? I mean, the numbers don't lie. I'm a numbers guy, and TJ Watt did have the best numbers in every single major defensive category. But nonetheless, we have the Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett, going to be rushing on the defensive line. So hoping to be giving quarterbacks some havoc back there, as I'm sure he will. We got Michael Pierce and Shelby Harris. Michael Pierce, the big, big man in the middle there, should be uh, able to generate some pressure. And then longtime vet Brandon Graham going to round out the defensive line. I would say linebacker is probably our one big weakness. Now, we do have Matt Milano, but he's injured. The only thing that I'm I was upset about this at first. Not sure if I am or if I'm actually happy about it, but I did forget to turn off pre-existing injuries. So anybody who's injured in real life, you know, Kirk Cousins with the Achilles, Matt Milano, to name a few other guys as well. Can't even think of who's hurt right now. But if they're injured in real life, they're going to be injured in this franchise. I kind of like that, though, because it just kind of builds to the realism, you know, to pick up the current season, how it is in real life. So that could affect some teams, you know, especially teams that drafted really good players who are actually injured. But we got Zach Cunningham. We got veteran Bobby Wagner, former member of the Legion of Boom. And then also Yaya Diaby. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's something. It's not anything terrible. We got Antoine Winfield as our free safety. He should be a game wrecker back there. And then also Jordan Poyer, superstar development player uh, on the Bills in real life. And this, you know, team I said used to be the Bills. So he's sticking around. But he should be an anchor back there in that secondary. And hopefully he gets lots of picks alongside his brother, Antoine Winfield. And then to round out our defense here with our corners. Okay, we got some good veterans on here. We got DJ Reed, we got Pat Pete, and then we also got Marcus Peters and Jason Verrett. So definitely an older cornerback room. DJ Reed is, okay, he's our, definitely the youngest at 25, but everybody else, Verrett, Pat Pete, Marcus Peters, they're old, but they're veterans, and hopefully they can make some plays back there. But this is your Toronto Thunderbirds. Almost forgot the name already. Still used to St. Louis Sentinels. This is your Toronto Thunderbirds. Hope you guys like the team. I'm super excited about it. Now let's meet some of the other teams around the league. I tried to make these divisions uh, make as much geographical sense as possible. I was able to do it for most, but you know, some teams like uh, you got like Paris and Tokyo and stuff like that. It's just kind of hard to make everything make the most sense. But for the most part, teams are, you know, geographically aligned with their division. 
and I also tried to make the team logo and our team name make the most sense as well. So we'll kick things off here with the NFC North. So formerly the Chicago Bears, we have the Louisville Desperados. Now that kind of makes sense. Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby horses, Desperados, Cowboys, Cowboys ride horses. There's something there. But taking a look at their squad, they got Amon Ross St. Brown, Saquon Barkley. So really good receiver, really good running back, Kevin Byard and uh, Trayvon Diggs, who he's one of the guys that is going to be injured, unfortunately. And also big Kenny Clark of the Green Bay Packers, who is their quarterback. They have Desmond Ritter. OK, so uh, nothing. And Mason Rudolph. OK, oh, Desmond Ritter, Mason Rudolph. Heck of a why a quarterback room there and moving on to the lions so the the detroit lions no longer in cold detroit they are going to be in cold anchorage so anchorage snowhawks anchorage alaska that is so that makes sense alaska cold snowhawks snow you guys get it so the former detroit lions now the anchorage snowhawks we got justin jefferson and george kittle and d hop so i mean tons of weapons for Whoever their quarterback is, quarterback Matt Stafford. Oh, my God. Got to watch out for the Anchorage Snowhawks. And that's funny. Matt Stafford on the Snowhawks. Snowhawks used to be the Lions. So there's definitely something there. Previously, the Green Bay Packers now turned Paris Black Knights. I don't know what the connection is there. It just sounds freaking cool. So Paris Black Knights going to have Fred Warner as middle linebacker to go along with DJ Moore and Matt Judon, who's hurt. They got Stephon Gilmore. They got Kyle Hamilton, Kenneth Walker III. So, I mean, decent squad. Nothing too crazy. And, uh, oh, my God. Well, their quarterback room sucks. They got freaking Mac Jones and Jake Hayner. So, uh, I don't know. They have some talent, but I don't think any of these QBs are really going to be able to, to get the ball to them. So, all right. And then rounding things out here with the Vikings, we have the Omaha Pioneers and I see good old Kenny Pickett there. So that's going to be interesting. But taking a look at the Pioneers here. Pioneers got a good defense. TJ Watt, who I was just talking about, probably got snubbed for defensive player of the year. But they got Demario Davis and Josh Allen. So their linebacking room is just absolutely absurd. Out of this world. Three really great pieces there. And Javon Holland in the uh, safety position as well. They got Puka Nakua. They got Grover Stewart, Tyson Campbell. And I just showed you their quarterback situation. Not really that good. And Omaha Pioneers does kind of make sense. Omaha Pioneers back in the 1800s actually did a lot of traveling through Omaha. And there's actually tons and tons of Pioneer statues there in Omaha. So that one is does make a, you guys are getting a geography lesson today, too. So I know you didn't sign up for it, but there you go. So moving on here to the <laughs> NFC East, formerly the Dallas Cowboys, we have the San Antonio Voyagers. Now, wanted to make them the Houston Voyagers, but as you'll see here momentarily, Houston has somebody else. So, you know, a lot of, lot of uh, astronaut-related material, I guess, if you want to call it. And a lot of, lot of space, I guess, is what I'm trying to say in Houston. San Antonio's in Texas, so that's kind of how, how that played out. Lamar Jackson, Jason Kelsey. Very, uh, very formidable duo there. And Joe Mixon. So, you know, their quarterback, their center, their halfback. That looks to be pretty much set here. Jeffrey Simmons, who's hurt, unfortunately. Derek Stingley, Tyler Lockett. So the Voyagers look pretty good. Might have to uh, keep an eye on them. Moving on to formerly the Chicago, or I'm sorry, the Philadelphia Eagles. My bad. I'm trying to learn these teams. I got my notes here. Formerly the Philadelphia Eagles, we have the Chicago Elks. Chicago Elks rocking with Jesse Bates the third. Look, rocking with uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, former or current teammate of Jordan Poyer. Rocking with Trey White, but he's hurt. Yeah, I mean, that does kind of suck about the pre-existing injuries. But again, I think it adds to the realism factor a little bit. They got Evan Ingram. They got Alvin Kamara. Jerry Judy, so some some decent pieces. Who's their QB? Trevor Lawrence, and wow, Trevor Lawrence down to a 76. That still got his superstar dev trait, but uh, 76 that is that is definitely not good. And also Jacoby, good old Jacoby, Jacoby Brissett. You love to see it. Moving on to the New York Football Giants, they are now, and I see C.J. Stroud already. They are now the London Mounties. I don't know. I feel like. 
aren't there like police forces in London? Or maybe that's maybe that's more so Canada, but mounted police officers. I don't know. London Mounties is the team at any rate. And uh, they got Stefan Diggs, best player on their squad. Uh, Hassan Reddick is here. Elton Jenkins, current Green Bay Packer. Kenny Moore, the second. Their squad doesn't look that good. They got Isaiah Pacheco and Kyle Pitts and George Pickens. So maybe it's a little bit better than initially uh, expected. CJ Stroud, though, and Zach Wilson. How about that? Zach Wilson, now Stroud's backup, which uh, he's going to be somebody's backup in real life because looks like the Jets are ready to move on from Zach. And rounding out the NFC East, formerly the Washington Commanders going across the waters to the east are now the Dublin Shamrocks. Dublin's Shamrocks have Demarcus Lawrence as their best player. They got Marlon Humphrey. They got Hawk, who is going to be hurt for a little while. Debo also hurt, which he shouldn't be. Debo's back now. I don't know when the last update for Madden came out. So that kind of sucks for the dubs, the Dublin Shamrocks. CJ Mosley's here, Jabril Peppers, Gabe Davis, Jameer Gibbs. So, I mean, I guess there's something there. Derek Carr is their quarterback and also Mike White as well. So, I, I mean, Dublin, they may have they may have some struggles here, uh, you know, to start out their SFL campaign. Now, going to the NFC South, formerly the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, we have the San Juan Tigers. Definitely not any Tigers in Puerto Rico, but by the time I got to this team, I was kind of running out of options here. They got Justin Simmons. They got Josh Jacobs. They got Tua Tunga Vailoa, so pretty good quarterback running back duo there. Devonta Smith also. Jamel Dean is here. Taylor Decker, Nick Bolton, Nate Hobbs. Uh, I mean, they're okay. Nothing really too crazy, but uh, they, they may have something. And then continuing on through the NFC South here, we have former Atlanta Falcons now turned Rio de Janeiro Redwoods. Their team moved to Brazil. That is right. And actually, believe it or not, there are Redwoods in Brazil, not the Redwoods that you're probably thinking of the big, huge, you know, uh, 50 foot trees or whatever. But coastal Redwoods are actually found in Brazil. And the Pau Brazil, as a matter of fact, is the symbol tree of Brazil. Put a lot of thought into this, guys. There's a method to my madness here, but they look insane. They got Tyree Kill. They got CMC. Jordan Maylada on the uh, offensive line. Greg Newsom, very good up and coming, uh, up and coming corner for the Browns. Also Raheem Mostert, Dalton Schultz. So Jackson Smith and Jigba. I mean, gosh dang, they're set at receiver. But who is throwing the ball to him? It's none other than Bustin Fields, my guy from Ohio State. So maybe. I don't know. Can he get the ball to Tyreek? He may have to rely on CMC quite a bit. Uh, but that is your Rio de Janeiro Redwoods. Moving on here through the NFC South, formerly the Carolina Panthers. We now have the Virginia Blues. I mean, Virginia Beach Blues. I'm sorry. So blue, Virginia Beach, water. I mean, that was kind of grasping for straws there. But I think it makes sense. They got Mark Andrews and Josh Allen. Deadly, deadly combination indeed. Joel Batonio, one of the best guards in the business. My guy, Tony Pollard. Shout out Austin Armadillos. He's here. Brian Burns. The Blues look pretty good. The Blues of Virginia Beach may be uh, making some waves, so to speak, in the SFL. And then finally, we have the former New Orleans Saints, the Oklahoma City Antlers. And that makes sense, too. A lot of elk native and present in OKC. Elks have antlers. Maybe I could have made them the Elks because the Elks are... I think I made, I said the Eagles, Chicago Elks, but whatever, it's fine. doesn't matter. Keenan Allen is their best player. Rashawn Slater, Ryan Jensen, but he's hurt. Justin Herbert, but he's hurt too. So I don't know how long he'll be out. Who's their quarterback behind Herbert? It's Teddy Two Gloves. Okay. So, I mean, guess you could do worse in the way of backups, but even with Jay Herbo here, the uh, good old Oklahoma City Antlers don't look that great. I mean, maybe they got a couple pieces here but nothing i would really be too worried about and capping off the nfc with the nfc west we have the former uh, arizona cardinals now turn honolulu dragons don't think there's any dragons in hawaii but in my defense there's no dragons anywhere dragons do not exist uh, unless you're a kid with a very good imagination so darius slay jr or should i'm sorry i'm sorry slay didn't mean to call you darius he doesn't like that slay is their best player Trey Hendrickson is here. Deron Bland is here. Dallas Goddard, who's up to superstar dev. Okay. 
and Mr. Irrelevant. So okay, the dragons are the dragons are great now. They are gonna go to the Super Bowl. They have Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, last pick of the NFL draft under center, and they got Christian Kirk, they got JOK of the Browns. So the Dragons do look uh look pretty good, actually, as a matter of fact. Moving on here, formerly the San Francisco 49ers, we have the Vancouver Huskies. Vancouver, also in Canada, very cold part, right? I think, cold part of the U.S., yeah. And the Huskies are going to be there, so I guess that makes sense. And oh my God, Patrick Mahomes, the Huskies, it's going to be the Huskies. Well, I guess it can't be the Huskies against the Dragons because they're in the same division. That's going to be the NFC Championship, Pat Mahomes and Brock Purdy. So they got Pat Mahomes. And how about Chris Jones staying with his teammate? Okay. Jalen Johnson, very good corner. Trent Brown, Teron Johnson, Christian Wilkins, Chris Godwin. Who is their running back is uh, Bijan Robinson. Got to watch out for the Huskies. They look to be a very, very good team. Now, moving on here to the former LA Rams. And this one pains me a little bit. We have the, not the St. Louis Sentinels. I love, that's that's my team. Go watch Sentinels franchise. If you like franchise content, it's a, another series I have here on YouTube, but the Sacramento Sen uh, Sentinels got Travis Kelsey. So we just saw Pat Mahomes. Now we see Travis Kelsey on the Sentinels, Roquan Smith and Devontae Adams. So Adams and Kelsey coming off the line of scrimmage, gonna cause problems for sure. Rasul Douglas, very good corner. DeAndre Swift is here. Jadeveon Clowney, Sam Cosme. Sentinels look pretty good. Not as good as the St. Louis Sentinels, mind you, but there's something. And then capping off the NFC West, we have previously the Seattle Seahawks, the Portland Steamers. That makes sense. Portland, obviously a port city. Steamers, boats, you guys get it. There's some tie in there. Derrick Henry is the best player and aging Derrick Henry, might I add. Daniil Hunter, Cooper Cup, Jalen Hurts. Okay. Jalen Hurts slinging the ball to Cooper Cup. You like that combination. And if that don't work out, you got King Henry. So that could be a pretty good squad there. Tyler Smith, Jonathan Jones, Jamal Adams, but he's hurt. Taylor Moten, their running back is, uh, I just said it, right? Yeah, it's Derrick Henry. Okay. So that is your NFC squad. Hope you guys like the NFC. Now let's move over to the AFC. AFC North. No more Cincinnati Bengals. We have another Ohio team, though, the Canton Condors. Canton, obviously, where it all started. That's about 25 minutes from where I live. If you've never been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, put it on your bucket list because it is super, super dope. But they got Max Crosby. They got Aaron Jones. They got Vaughn Miller, who I'm surprised still has Superstar X Factor in this game, but he does. Michael Pittman here. Jared Goff going to be slinging the ball. Okay. Jared Goff to Michael Pittman with Aaron Jones in the backfield. That's a pretty, pretty good combination, I would say. Moving on to the former Cleveland Browns, and this is where it gets a little weird, but again, I was kind of running out of options here. We have all the way east, far east, so I guess you could even go west and get there too. We have the Tokyo Golden Eagles, a team in Japan. You love to see it. AJ Terrell, this team don't look really too good, especially on offense. They got AJ Terrell, they got Foyer Aluakon, Aiden Hutchinson, their defense Looks really good. DeForest Buckner. I guess Brees Hall, not a bad option. Deontay Johnson. And my, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The disrespect is unreal. They got Bake. So this team is all-star caliber. And I just realized, too, this team is formerly the Cleveland Browns, and they got Baker Mayfield as their quarterback. So that's an interesting, interesting little storyline here. Moving on. Uh, continuing on through the AFC North, formerly the Baltimore Ravens, we have another Ohio team, the Columbus Caps. And that one makes sense because Columbus is the capital of Ohio, if you didn't know. So they got CeeDee Lamb, they got Penny Sewell, Christian Darisaw, very good offensive line. Rashawn Gary, the Packer, is here. CJ Gardner Johnson, big old trash talker he is, but he certainly backs it up. Uh, Najee Harris, Bradley Chubb, who's hurt. And their quarterback is who? Their quarterback is Minshew Mania. Watch out for the Columbus Caps. They are going to cause some damage. Rounding out the AFC North, no more Pittsburgh Steelers because now we have the Montreal Monarchs, another Canadian team. And Monarchs, I don't know if that fits with Canadian culture or not, but I'm a big fan of alliteration. I can tell you that much. So, you know, as you can tell in my series is 
Austin Armadillos, St. Louis Sentinels, Montreal Monarchs. I just like the way it sounds. Joe Burrow staying in the AFC North, but not going to be playing right now as he is currently hurt. So they got Teron Armstead, Cam Hayward. So two really good but aging players. Trent McDuffie, really good up and coming safety. Harrison Smith is here. Mike Williams, who's also hurt. Corey Lindsley, who's also hurt. T. Higgins, who's about to go somewhere in the NFL. Don't know where. And their running back is Damian Pierce, Latavius Murray, Zach Charbonnet. So sorry, Montreal, but you're probably not going to do too good in your first season. AFC East time, starting with your Toronto Thunderbirds. And I mean, that roster just looks exquisite, man. And I take great pride in that because that was all me during the fantasy draft. I didn't record that part because it would have just taken too long. And I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible. But you guys get the gist. Did a really good job. Now, Miami Dolphins will now be another uh, warm weather team, but not in Miami. They are going all the way down under to Melbourne. Melbourne Dreadnoughts. And obviously, you would need a ship to get over to Melbourne or a plane. And I chose the ship route. So Melbourne Dreadnoughts are here. They got PS2 as their best player, cornerback. Chris Lindstrom, Frank Ragnow, good offensive line. Alex Highsmith at linebacker, Jalen Waddell. So that's interesting. Jalen Waddell stays with the team that used to be the Miami Dolphins. So that's a cool little fun, interesting storyline there. Xavier McKinney, Patrick Queen, and their quarterback is Bryce Young and Hendon Hooker. So two unproven. I mean, Bryce Young, I would say he's unproven because of what happened in Carolina last year. Not a good situation. But two unproven rookies going to be under center. Now, the Jets are now the Austin Lumberjacks. Again, don't think there's really too many Lumberjacks down there in sunny Texas. But by this point, I was kind of running out of options. And their defensive line is just going to be absolutely nightmarish. Nick Posa, Dexter Lawrence, and Derek Brown. I mean, come on. I mean, you're going to have like 1.5 seconds to throw the ball if you're playing the Austin Lumberjacks. They got Tariq Wollin, so really good defense for sure. Calvin Ridley, David Montgomery, Brandon Cooks, Andre Sisco, and their quarterback is AR, but he is uh, injured, so hopefully he comes back soon because right now they got Marcus Mariota and Clayton Toon, so they definitely need AR back on their squad. And then rounding things out here in the AFC East, we are going to go to the former New England Patriots, not going to be New England Patriots anymore. They are the Brooklyn Nighthawks. And I don't know, Brooklyn, lots of, you know, New York, lots of nightlife there. Nighthawks, I guess, is what I was reaching for there. Uh, great, great offensive line. Lane Johnson and Tristan Wirfs, whoever their quarterback is, which, God almighty, does this guy need a good offensive line. Aaron Rodgers, no longer have to deal with that. And that's, that's crazy. This is the, okay, this is the Patriots, so he's still... In the AFC East, but lots of lots of things kind of aligning here in the SFL compared to what the NFL was. But Aaron Rodgers finally going to have some good protection and he's going to be slinging the ball to Jamar Chase. So got to watch out for the Brooklyn Nighthawks. And wouldn't you know it, they're in our division and also Adam Thielen here, too. And their running back is Brian Robinson and Leonard Fournette. Shout out Brian Robinson, our running back on the St. Louis Sentinels. Over here in the AFC South, no more Indianapolis Colts. We have the St. Louis Bulls. St. Louis Bulls rocking with Zach Martin as their best player. Marshawn Lattimore, who's hurt, unfortunately. Scary Terry, our wide receiver number one over in St. Louis. And Jonathan Allen. How about that? They have uh, Terry McLaurin and Jonathan Allen, who I have on the St. Louis Sentinels in my man fran main franchise series. And go check that out if you like franchise content. Greg Rousseau, Kirk Cousins, who's hurt with that Achilles. So who is Kirk's backup? Kirk's backup is Tyrod Taylor. And I'm pretty sure we actually play the Bulls in our first preseason game. I'm not going to play. I'll probably play one preseason game here, bits and pieces of it, just to give you guys a feel for the team. But I'm not going to play all the preseason games. But it's looking like Tyrod Taylor is going to be the backup to Kirk Cousins. So there you go. Moving on here to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Not going too far from home here. Only moving south a little ways they are the orlando orbits so orlando orbits have sauce gardner who is a up to a superstar x factor now well deserved i would say and derwin james so good luck throwing into that secondary 
Amari Cooper, who's obviously with the Browns, is here. Jonathan Taylor. So some really, really good uh, big-name guys at the top end of their roster. Colton Miller's here. Jalen Phillips, who's hurt. Dawson Knox, Ernest Jones, and their quarterback is Kyler. So uh, Orlando Orbits could definitely be somebody here. Moving on to the Tennessee Titans, now turned Memphis River Hogs. Don't know how many River Hogs are in Memphis, but I like the sound of it. It seems to flow pretty good. They got Jalen Ramsey, they got Quinton Williams, and they also have Creed Humphrey, Brandon Ayuk, and Nico Collins at wide receiver. That could be a pretty deadly combination to go along with Khalil Mack and Bobby Okereke at the linebackers. And the River Hogs quarterback is Deshaun Watson, who won't be here right away. And for the River Hogs' sake, he better hurry up and uh, massage that shoulder because Skylar Thompson is their backup, which is not anything to write home about. And then finishing things out here with the Houston Texans. You know I had to do it. They're going to be the Houston Oilers because why not? We're bringing the Oilers back to the NFL or the SFL, I should say. So Aaron Donald is their best player, Charbarius Ward and Levante David. So pretty good defensive pieces and Justin Matabuike too. So defense looks to be pretty good. Ronnie Stanley, good tackle. Zay Flowers is their receiver. Muth, Pat Fryermuth is here. Eric Armstead, Paulson Adebo, also Justin Reed. I saw their quarterback was injured, but I mean, it's Danny Dimes. So maybe the Oilers would prefer to have Cooper Rush. I don't know. But hopefully Danny Dimes can come back and earn that big old fat contract that he got last season. And finishing out the AFC with the AFC West here, the Denver Broncos now turn Albuquerque Armadillos, which Albuquerque, I'm sure lots of deserts there in New Mexico. So you're bound to find some Armadillers walking around. But they took Nick Chubb, unfortunately, and he will be gone for a while. So that sucks for the Dillos. Uh, AJ Brown, though, Laramie Tunsil, pretty good. LeJerry Sneed. Wyatt Teller, so they took uh, two Cleveland Browns here, Nick Chubb and Wyatt Teller, Asante Samuel, Malik Hooker, Shaq Thompson, who's also hurt, and their quarterback is Geno Smith. So let me tell you, don't write off these armadillos because they might not write back. LA Chargers going back to their roots in San Diego. We have these San Diego Aviators here. So Jair Alexander is their best player and Mike Evans also on the squad. David Bakhtiari, so two Packers taken pretty high in the draft. Of course, Bach, who knows when he's going to come back. This dude is always hurt. I say Packers just move on from him because I think he's played like a total of like 10 games in the last three years. Uda Baker, Joey Bosa. Okay, so Joey sticking around with the Chargers. That's pretty cool to see. Travis Etienne, Tremaine Edmonds, and I saw Sam Laporta there. And Russ going to be cooking over there in San Diego. Will he cook? Don't know, but he's going to be obviously trying to do that. And uh, no more Kansas City Chiefs. The Kansas City Chiefs are now the Salt Lake City Bisons of Utah. And it looks like they put a lot of stock in their defense, too, as they have 11 from heaven, who's not going to be 11 now. He's going to be number 98. But Micah Parsons needs no introduction. Denzel Ward, Cleveland Brown guy himself. Talanoa Hufunga, who's hurt. Vita Vea. So they put a lot of pieces on defense. Another Cleveland Brown, David Njoku. They got Tyler Linderbaum at center. Kevin Zietler, uh, Garrett Wilson. Interesting. And their QB is going to be Sam Howell. QB of the future tag. I, I don't know, Matt. And maybe he's the QB of the future, but I'm not convinced. And then finishing out the SFL here. No more Raiders of Las Vegas, but they are still they are going back to Oakland. So we have the Oakland Wizards. Tyron Smith, Tyron Matthew, two Tyrons, spelled differently, are their best players. Dak Prescott is here. Okay, interesting. Quentin Nelson, Kendall Fuller, big, big part of the St. Louis Sentinels team there. DK Metcalf, Julian Love, Michael Wenyu, Robert Hunt, Ramondre Stevenson. So the Wizards could be somebody. And uh, that is the SFL league for you guys so i hope that you guys like it hope you guys are excited for this just again getting one final look at all of the teams here the divisions who's in them i like it took me a long not a long time but a couple hours to get all these teams situated get my notes all in order it's gonna take me a long long time to learn about who's on what team but you guys are gonna learn with me and i will say this too 
if you guys would like to be in this series, okay, as a subscriber, comment down below. You can do it on this video. I'll mention this in all the other videos in this in this franchise here. But if you would like to be in this franchise, comment what you would like your player's name to be in the comments. Comment what you would like the position to be. Comment your height, the height that you want it to be, the weight that you want to be, and what position you want to be. And what I'll do is take, you know, somebody on the lower end pool of the free agents here, and I will turn that person into your player. I'll definitely bump the overall up. No 99s probably, but I'll, you know, I'll give you something in the, in the range of somewhere between 70 and 90 probably. But if you would like to be in this series, comment the name you want to use down below, the college you went to, the position that you want to be in, uh, and then also, you know, what, maybe you could put your height, your weight in there, something like that. And I will add you to this SFL Series League. All right, so I'll play a little bit of this game here. Uh, we're going to be taking on the Montreal Monarchs at the Castle. Nice stadium name. I Let's look at their team again real quick. I want to at least see what we're up against as far as you know, quarterbacks, running backs, things like that. So the Monarchs, oh yeah, that's right. They should have uh, Joe Cool here, but they're going to have Drew Locke. So, okay, get to go up against Drew Locke. They got Damian Pierce, receiving core. They got, yeah, they're struck with injuries. No Mike Williams, T. Higgins, no, Noah Brown not here either. Hopefully, I'm, I'm a little upset about that. I got to be honest. Wish I would have turned the pre-existing injuries off. But the more I think about it, I mean, like I said, it makes sense. We're picking up, you know, really in this Madden, you know, sim verse, this storyline here. We're supposed to be picking up where the NFL left off. Obviously, we're one year behind because all these players have already played so far in this season. But really, I mean, it makes sense. Like players should be injured and, in, you know, if they're injured in real life, they should be injured here. So, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. But we'll dive in here to this first game here. Play a little bit of it. See what the team looks like. And we're taking on the Montreal Monarchs. So let's get down. Let's go over, I guess, up, I should say, to Canada, Montreal, and get ready for the game. Let's get a look at the Castle Monarch Stadium here. Preseason football. If you guys are fired up for this brand new series and you think it's a good concept, stay with me. Watch it. I'll be dropping this all the time. And I'm really curious to see, you know, all these uniform designs. I haven't looked at too many of them besides the Sentinels, the team that I play with in my franchise but we are going to be in the home whites oh i should have showed you guys the alternates wait till you see the t the toronto t-birds alternate uniforms they are something special but here comes drew Locke and these montreal monarchs of canada and i don't even think i showed you guys we got justin tucker so kickers and punters were just not getting taken in the fantasy draft so i was able to get justin tucker as my kicker and that having that kick arc slowed down is just music to my freaking ears and i also got aj cole as the punter so fullbacks weren't getting taken i got kyle you kickers weren't getting taken i got jay tuck probably the best in history and punters weren't getting taken and i got aj cole i gotta get used to these playbooks too because i am rocking with the buffalo bills playbook obviously we used to be the buffalo bills and i'm not used to, i don't think i've ever played with this playbook i actually use the seahawks playbook in my franchise don't ask me why i just use that playbook a lot in the past and became very familiar with it so i have to learn this uh buffalo bills playbook as we see bobby wagner gets the first tackle of this preseason, or at least the gameplay that we've witnessed. So Locke and Damian Pierce, what kind of combination is that going to be? I mean, Damian Pierce running like he means business, picking up seven. Well, man up here on third down, probably going to use her on Yaya Diaby. We'll see what Damian Pierce does. It's a play fake and wide open is the tight end, who I have no idea who that is because I am not familiar with these teams at all quite yet it's Smythe okay other third down here we'll see if we can get a little bit of pressure here on Drew Locke make him make a mistake which we know he's good for and the catch is actually completed hauled in there by DJ Moore or Chris Moore rather and it's gonna be fourth and inches we'll see if the Monarchs go for it they are gonna punt so we are gonna get to see Jordan Love and this offense for the very first time and keep your eyes on the tickers down there. Oh, it's a fake punt. I wasn't even looking. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. 
I see you, Montreal. That was something. That was something. I can already tell. I thought uh, trying to lower my blood pressure from all the raging out in the St. Louis Sentinels game and I, games, and I can already tell that that's not going to happen here. And the Montreal Monarchs are the former Pittsburgh Steelers. So Mike Tomlin, you see him there? Good shot of Mike there. He uh, took his talents all the way up to Canada from Pittsburgh and looking like he's calling a pretty good game so far. So Drew Locke in shotgun. We'll see what he wants to do. How about a pick there? Okay. That was very, very close from Marcus Peters. He was able to get his hands on it and a big third down for the Monarchs. All right, guys, come on. Miles Garrett, I know you can get back there to Drew Locke. Drew Locke scrambling around and we got to him. A bunch of T-Birds there. Leonard Floyd, along with others, were able to get to Drew Locke. I'm probably going to be calling them the T-Birds a lot. I like that, but Toronto Thunderbirds, the alliteration is there. I love the uh, red and orange-ish combination. And wait till I show you their alternate uniforms. Kind of reminds me of the creamsicle for the Tampa Bay Bucks. They are clean indeed. And another guy who is very clean looking to make his mark on the SFL, just like he's doing in the NFL. We got Jordan Love out of Utah State. I am so happy to play with him. He was uh, not even the highest rated quarterback that was available in the fantasy draft when I took him. But I just I felt really good about him. And hopefully he can be our QB of the future. So we'll see what Love does here to start out. We got a wide open Marquez Valdez Scantling, but probably going to be holding. I would imagine it is holding, holding and it's on the offense. And the culprit is Donovan Smith. Thanks, Donovan. Get a look at Kyron Smith out of the backfield. Need some good blockers. They're not going to be there. Luckily, Kyron is a little bit fast, but he is going backwards. And that's a second and 23. Now, as I mentioned, I do not know anything about the Bills playbook, so it will probably take me a little while to get used to it and to kind of familiarize myself with it. So that's also kind of why I'm playing this preseason game. I'll tell you what, I'm sending Darren Waller streaking up the middle. Can Love fit it in there? He almost did, but the pass was batted away. Big third down here might have Olave up the middle, which I think is exactly going to be the read, and he hangs on and catches it. And you know what? It's fourth and four. It's the preseason. This game don't count for nothing. I'm I'm going for it. Of course I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go screen pass. Screen pass seems like a good idea to me. Maybe we'll go to a uh, screen pass to the right, hoping that Kyron Williams can pick up what he needs and we get some good blockers there on the outside. Let's see what happens. We got pressure coming in. And oh, yeah, baby, Kyron. Trying to juke the defender there. He's not able to. That's Harrison Smith, I believe. But it's a good pickup nonetheless. Moving and grooving on this drive. Might have MVS on the quick completion, which we do. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, the speedster. Taking a lot of heat in Kansas City. But in that previous game, he had a huge, huge catch that pretty much sealed the deal. So I think he might be starting to earn his rep back. But he was definitely, <laughs> definitely... Struggling there for a time. Now it's first and 10. We're in the red zone. Going to come out play action with some crossing routes developing downfield. There's a big one to Zay Jones who hangs on, baby. Jordan Love and Zay Jones hoping they can be a deadly combination on this Toronto team. That's our first touchdown of the series. 7-7 seven, seven here in the second quarter. We're playing pretty good, keeping pace with... The Monarchs, and that time I just wasn't able to get around Joe Thune, Joe Tooney, and Kyron Williams. He's been a, a pretty good threat in the passing game, this game, on the screens, but not really getting it done in the running department so far. So I got to make sure we watch that. Second and 13. Now we're going all the way to Darren Waller on the corner route, and that one is going to be batted around there by Epps, and that's going to bring up a third and long. So in this situation, let's see, what do I want to call? Again, not really too familiar with this playbook, but let's go a little gun post here. Maybe have MVS up the middle or possibly Olave or somebody on the deep shot. We'll have to see what happens. We're actually just going to go to X there, who's Darren Waller, who has the speed to outrun Paulson or whoever that was. I don't even know. Have no idea who these players are. It's going to take me a while to learn them, but it was a nice completion. Love almost got drilled there, and the Thunderbirds are moving. Play action boot out of the pistol. Got to keep our eyes 
upfield here and not get sacked. There's a nice completion to Zay Jones. So Zay Jones, I mean, Chris Olave is our number one target, but in this game so far, Zay Jones is playing great. He's got three receptions for, I think it said 46 yards, something like that. So got to watch the uh, love to Zay connection. That could prove to be deadly here. We're getting really close to the red zone. Going to roll out of the pocket here, and I see somebody wide open. It's a bad pass from Love. We had Olave wide open. Love just misfired. Another third and long here. I'm going PA crossers. So if I could get some protection, somebody might be open downfield or it's going to be intercepted. It is intercepted. I think that's Nelson. That is Nelson. That's a drive killer. I tried to lob it over the head of the defender, but didn't really work too well. Um, you know, not playing 100% serious here. I kind of am. But right now, I'm just mainly trying to learn the playbooks. That's going to be a nice completion by Locke for a gain of four. Pressure up the middle. Let's see if it can get home or possibly get Damian Pierce stopped in the backfield. This one should. This one is going to be a run play for sure. Bobby Wagner is blitzing. And we couldn't get to Pierce because he did have some really good blockers. DJ Reed couldn't bring him down. So that's a nice chain mover for Montreal. Big third down play here, third and seven. We'll see if we can get the ball back in the hands of Jordan Love and the T-Birds. See where Locke's gonna go. That should be a completion, and it is just barely, but the receiver got exactly what he needed. That's Mo Alley Cox, the tight end, actually, as a matter of fact. So that was a nice chain mover. Drew Locke playing, playing like he's got ice in the veins. Maybe they don't even need Joe Burrow. You know, maybe Drew Locke can have a resurgence of his career. Another guy who needs a, not even a resurgence, but just a big old jump start on his career is Damian Pierce there, able to pick up seven and move the chains. Hopefully we get the ball back af before halftime so I can show at least one more drive and then I may cut to later in the third quarter. Now, if you watch my Sentinel series, no. When I next episode, we'll start the regular season and I'll get into, you know, full gameplay content just like I do in that one. But here in the preseason, just kind of messing around here, getting a feel for the squad and the playbook. And, you know, I got nothing uh, really riding on this game too much. So next episode will be full game content. Chance to score here potentially before halftime. Let's see. We got Marquez Valdez scantling wide open in the corner. Jordan Love drops it in the bucket. He's playing pretty good so far. 203 yards, a touchdown, uh, does have that one pick, but that's okay. And I, I like this team. I like this team. I got to say, only been playing with them for almost two quarters, but I do like this team so far. How about screen pass? That thing is shut down instantly. No chance there for Kyron Williams. Maybe draw play to Kyron. We still got uh, all three timeouts, so it's okay if we don't pick this up. But Kyron has some speed, and he's going to get very close. think that we will go ahead and burn a timeout there. And show me, do I got my Y stick on the goal line? I don't think I do. I do. Yes. It's Y stick all day. We're going to be looking for Chris Olave. And hopefully Jordan Love can thread the needle and get this score. There's Chris diving for it. Tying the ball game up. Going to go into the locker room. Hopefully 14-14. Late in the third here, I just did some simming. And now we are down by 11. And it looks like our backups are all in. So... Get to see uh, some of the backup guys in case any of our main stars gets injured. Case Keenum handing it off to Kareem Hunt there and looking to put a drive together to get us downfield, get the score a little bit closer. And Kareem Hunt and Case Keenum apparently are just the guys for the job. So Kareem, draw play up the middle, couldn't turn the corner fast enough. That thing is shut down by Josie Jewell. Green pass to Hunt. Let's pick this thing up. See if we can do it. Kareem catches it. Needs some blockers. Kareem is always elusive. I see that uh, every time I watch the Browns, so glad that they decided to bring him back. Don't think that they ever should have let him go to begin with. But when the Nick Chubb injury happened, Kareem was right there and ready to resign. So new... Fresh set of downs here for Case Keenum. See what happens on this drive. We're going to check it down to Randall Cobb, who breaks the tackle there, picking up decent yardage. And it looks like old Case is starting out pretty good, minus that one pick that he had. Don't like to see that on his resume, but let's be honest, it's Case Keenum. So you're going to see some picks. Let's see who can get open on this one here. We're going to try square and... 
Just got a little bit too much pressure there by Williams in the backfield. In case Keenum goes down, I got to say, I'm uh, kind of liking this Bills playbook. It's I was a little worried. I've been playing with the same playbook for forever and starting to get a little familiar with this one here. So who is going to get open? How about our tight end? It's Logan Thomas. We know all about him from the St. Louis Sentinels series. If you guys watch that, Logan Thomas is a dude and he's going to have to be a dude on this on this team, too. Apparently, so we'll give it to Kareem Hunt again. No blocks materializing, and he shut down for no gain. And it's picked by Case Keenum. Josie Jewell gets it, and Case is going to have his second interception of the game. So there you go. Uh, seven and a half minutes, to, or seven and a half minutes roughly to go in the fourth. I'll see if anything crazy happens on this defensive stand, but if not, I'll probably just sim it and let you guys know what to expect. For the first real episode of the SFL. Oh, sack, sack. There's Carlos Dunlap getting a Rourke. Don't even know who that is. Rourke in the backfield. We do have three sacks in this game. So if nothing else, our defensive linemen and them are playing really good. Second and 23. I mean, give me the ball back. There's no chance that this guy Rourke should be able to pick this up. And of course, he's going to because it's Madden. And that's why I hate this game. And, uh... Yep, I'll see you guys at the end of the game. Damon Sanders not having it. He's not happy about the boys' performance. And uh, I'll say, Damon, it's only preseason. Don't worry about it. Let's just see what happened in this game, and then we'll move on here. Jordan Love looked good. In the time he played, 205 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Drew Locke did Drew Locke things, question mark, I guess. Case Keenum didn't play good. Nathan Rourke, rookie out of Ohio. He's from Ohio, so I should know that. So that's what happened in the passing department. I mean, we didn't really have a running game too much, but I was mainly throwing passes. Latavius Murray, the longtime vet, making his way to this team. He had a good game. And then receiving, it looks like uh, Zay Jones was playing pretty good. He had that touchdown. Chris Olave also had one as well. Darren Waller had a good game. T. Higgins for the Monarchs was there. Mo Ali Cox was there, so... That is a uh, initial look at this team, guys. I am so pumped. I cannot wait to start actually recording, you know, real episodes of this. And again, if you guys are hyped about the SFL, the Smalls Football League, like the video, subscribe. I got I drop at least two episodes of Sentinels franchise every week. So now I'm assuming I'll probably drop one of Sentinels franchise, one of this. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's really more about what you guys want. So if you guys let me know in the comments what you want to see on this channel. And uh, if you're not subscribed, you should subscribe. I drop Madden 24 content every week and I'm really trying to get to 1000 subscribers. That's my next milestone. And the benefits for you guys, if you join this channel, you'll get good quality content week in and week out that I promise you will enjoy. So lots to look forward to. I am so hyped. SFL in the house. Thank Taylor Swift and the Swifties for shutting that buying the NFL and shutting it down. And your boy CJ Smalls came in and started this whole new league that we got. So I will look forward to catching you on episode two of the SFL. We'll get into the regular season, you know, get down to the nitty gritty and see what happens around this league. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then. Peace.